Dear students, welcome to Supply Chain Management course. This topic will cover strategic alliances. The prescribed reading material is chapter 8 from our textbook plus the article. In our previous lecture, we discussed integration strategies between an organization and its supply base. Mainly, we discussed procurement and outsourcing. In this chapter, we will be discussing the integration strategy downstream with distributors, with retailers, and 3PLs. Downstream's related activities can be either conducted internally within the firm, they can be conducted by acquiring another firm, it can be conducted by arm's length, transactions through contract, short term, or through, through strategic alliances, long term relationship. So for internal activities, when do you think that internal activities is preferred? A firm can perform the activity using internal resources and expertise if they are available. So if you have the core strength to perform an activity within the organization, then do it. If the activity is considered as a core competence, then never outsource it. So under these conditions, logistics activities are preferred to be conducted internally within the firm. The second option is acquisition. If a firm doesn't have the expertise or specialized resources internally, it can acquire another firm that does. This will give the acquiring firm full control over the way a particular business function is being performed, but it has possible drawbacks. For one thing, acquiring a successful company can be difficult and expensive. The culture of acquired company may clash with that of the acquiring company, and the effectiveness of the acquired company could be lost as well. So the acquired company may have previously dealt with the acquiring company's competitors, and it could lose this business. This may hurt the overall effectiveness for these reasons, as well as many others, an acquisition may not be appropriate. The third option is to have arm's length transactions. Most business transactions are of this type. A firm needs a specific item or a service, such as delivery of a lot of items, a maintenance of a vehicle, or the design and installation of a logistics management software. So many times an arm's length transaction is the most effective arrangement. Of course, the goal and strategies of the suppliers may not match those of the buyer. In general, this kind of a short-term arrangement fulfill a particular business need, but doesn't need to lead to a long-term strategic advantage. The fourth type is strategic alliance. These are typically multi-faced, goal-oriented, long-term partnership between two organizations in which both risks and rewards are shared. In many cases, the problem of outright acquisition can be avoided while at the same time mutual goals can lead to the commitment of more resources than in the case of the arm's length transaction. Strategic alliances typically lead to long-term strategic benefits for both partners. The second topic we will be discussing today is a framework for strategic alliances. There are many 
difficult strategic issues that play a part in the selection of appropriate strategic alliance. So here we will discuss a framework where it can help for considering the right kind of supply chain related strategic alliance. So the first factor is we need to ask ourselves, does the relationship add a value to the product? So a partnership with appropriate firm can help adding value to the existing product. And this value can be in terms of uh, time to market, distribution, times, repair time, help to increase perceived value of a particular firm. Similarly, partnership between companies with complementary product lines can add value for both companies' product. So is the relationship with the supplier or with the a partner will provide us with an extra value like an access to a new market or improved uh, delivery time, complementary product, and so on. The second factor to be considered, improved market access. So partnerships that lead to better advertising or increased access to a new marketing channel can be beneficial. For example, complementary customer product manufacturers can cooperate to address the need of major retailers, increasing sales for everybody. The third factor is strengthening operations. So alliances between the correct firms or the correct alliances or partnership can help to improve operations by lowering operating costs or system costs and improving cycle time. Facilities and resources can be used more efficiently and effectively. For example, companies with complementary seasonal product can effectively use warehouses and trucks around the world. Around the year for example they can use it year round and by this they can utilize their assets the warehouses the trucks uh, uh, all over the, the year so here they will be able to share logistics facilities and also process expertise also we need to ask if the relationship is adding technological strength. So partnership in which technology is shared can help to add skills to both partners. Also, the difficult transition between old and new technology can be facilitated by the expertise available in one of the partner's organization. For example, a supplier may need particular enhanced information system to work with a certain customer. Partnering with the firm that already have the expertise in this system make it easily or make it easier to address difficult technological issues. The following factor is about enhanced strategic growth. Many new opportunities that have high entry bar barriers, partnership might enable the firm to overcome this barrier by pooling expertise and resources and exploring new opportunities. And this can be achieved by combined resources of partners. So both of the uh, combined resources of the both partner can s provide sufficient economies of scale to enhance entries into the new markets. Also, it's about enhancing organizational skills. So does the, uh, the alliance promote organizational learning? Strategic alliances provide a, a huge opportunity for organizational learning. 
in addition to learning from one another partners forced to learn more about themselves and to become more flexible so that these alliances work also we need to ask ourselves does the alliance provide the opportunity to build financial strength in addition to addressing competitive issues that we have been discussing earlier alliances can help build financial strength income can be increased and administrative costs can be shared between partners or even reduced owing the expertise of one or both partners of course alliances also limit investments exposure by sharing risks so mainly this framework enable us to analyze the situation of the alliances and should we go further with it or should we stop there the list we discussed help organization to determine whether a particular strategic alliance is appropriate for their firms or not in the same time it will help the firm to determine strategic alliances downsides as we discussed earlier each organization has its core strength it has the core competence something very specific that the customer appreciate this specific talent that di differentiate the organization from its competitor it is considered as a strong core strength so this core strength must not be weakened by the alliance which can happen if resources are deviated from this core strength or if the technological or strategic strength are compromised to make the partnership successful a famous example of outsourcing or partnership failure is the IBM example IBM decided to enter personal computers in 1981 the company didn't have the infrastructure in place to design and build personal computers rather rather than taking like a further step in developing these capabilities IBM outsourced almost all major components of the PC so they decided to outsource microprocessors to Intel and the operating system to Microsoft so IBM was able to realize the computer within 15 months of the beginning of the design so that was the bright side of the outsourcing decision so by 1985 IBM market share was more than 40 percent however the downside to IBM strategy soon become clear as competitors such as compact decided to enter the market by utilizing the same suppliers as IBM Intel and Microsoft so when IBM tried to regain control of the market by introducing its new line of computers new features and designs and operating systems it was too late and the original architecture remained dominant in the market by the end of 1995 IBM's market share has decreased to less than 8% behind market compact a market leader compact 10% finally in 2005 IBM sold its personal computer divisions to Lenovo group so strategic alliances has their or have their advantages and disadvantages the list we discussed before enable us to determine whether to go ahead with the strategic alliance or not and what type of strategic alliance 